the pH of a weak acid solution is not the same as the pH of a strong acid solution of the same concentration. And in fact, the strength of an acid is intuitively related to the concentration of hydronium in that solution at equilibrium and therefore its pH. So to think about this, let's look at an example of a weak acid versus a strong acid, HCl versus HF. HCl is a strong acid. This means that it reacts with water to transfer its proton completely to water, giving Cl minus aqueous and aqueous hydronium ion in a reaction that goes only in the forward direction, essentially a reaction that is irreversible. This means, for example, that if we started with an HCl concentration of 0.1 mole per liter, then at the end of the reaction, we would be left with no HCl, and we would be left with 0.1 moles per liter of hydronium ion concentration. Using simple stoichiometry and the idea that the reaction goes to completion, we can go immediately from the initial HCl concentration to the final or equilibrium H3O plus concentration. The two are numerically equals as the reaction goes forward completely. The same process occurs in an aqueous solution of hydrofluoric acid. However, since HF is a weak acid, this process is reversible, and we do need to consider the reverse reaction when we're thinking about how much H3O plus is going to exist at equilibrium. In other words, we need to consider equilibrium and the value of Ka associated with this reaction. In essence, our assumption in the strong acid case is that Ka is infinite. That is, that there are zero reactants left when this has reached equilibrium. And if we're talking about a value of Ka that's something like 10 to the 7th or 10 to the 10th, typical for the strong acids like HCl and HI, then we may as well assume that Ka is infinite, because that's going to get us as close as we need to get, I'll put it that way, to predicting the pH accurately. That won't be the case when Ka is much smaller. What happens in the bottom case is that if we again start with 0.1 moles per liter of HF and no hydronium, at equilibrium, we're going to end up with a concentration of HF in solution that is actually greater than zero, and a concentration of hydronium that is less than 0.1 moles per liter. This is because HF is a weak acid, and it doesn't dissociate completely. That's the definition of a weak acid, essentially. So not only can we say that the pH of a weak acid solution is not the same as the pH of a strong acid solution at the same concentration. We can also say that the pH is going to be greater than the pH of a comparable strong acid. The strong acid dissociates completely, giving us a concentration that can be figured out from simple stoichiometry, while the weak acid dissociates in an incomplete manner, forcing us to use the tools of equilibrium to figure out how much H3O plus is present. The specific tool we're going to make use of is one that we've seen before, an ice table. Using a given Ka value and a given initial concentration of HF, we can figure out the change, whether the reaction is going to go forward and backward and to what extent, the equilibrium concentrations, and from there the equilibrium pH. Let's look at a specific example of this phenomenon in action. Let's calculate the pH of a 0.025 molar aqueous solution of HF. This may seem like a fairly concise problem statement, but in fact it contains all the information we need to calculate the pH. So our goal here is to find the pH, and specifically what we're after is an equilibrium pH. Very few problems will say equilibrium pH because the pH that we measure tends to be the equilibrium pH because of the rapid nature of acid-base reactions. In any event, calculate the pH and the fact that HF is not a strong acid, it's not on our list of strong acids, those two things tell us that we're looking at an equilibrium problem here. We're looking at an ice table type of problem. As usual, the ice table is going to have three lines, initial, change, and equilibrium. And one unique feature of this problem statement that we didn't see in the previous chapter is that no balanced chemical equation is given. So it's up to us to write the balanced chemical equation, and this can be one of the most difficult parts of the process of solving problems like this. The key thing to realize is that the Ka is given. And the fact that this K is a Ka tells you immediately what type of chemical reaction is occurring. Specifically, Ka is always the reaction of the acid in aqueous solution with liquid water. A proton is transferred, 
to give the conjugate base of the acid on the product side, that's aqueous fluoride in this case, and H3O plus ion. Now that we've got that down, another thing that's worth noticing is that liquid water isn't going to appear in the equilibrium expression, and so we don't need to worry about it at all. The initial concentration of the acid is given here, 0.025 molar. And again, although initial isn't said explicitly, you should assume that when a concentration is given with no other qualifier, it's an initial concentration. Essentially, the acid solution was prepared this way by diluting from a stock solution or dissolving solid acid in water or something like that. In this case, it was probably diluted from a stock. Um, but that number is an initial value simply derived from solution stoichiometry without any concerns of equilibrium. What the problem is asking you to do is to apply the equilibrium treatment given these initial conditions. So our initial concentration is 0.025 moles per liter of HF. We have no conjugate base. You can assume that unless the conjugate base is mentioned. And we will, just to give a little teaser, in the following chapter, look at situations where we have a mixture of the acid and its conjugate base. The clever will notice that H3O+, plus, if we're talking about an aqueous solution, water is involved, and the concentration of H3O+, plus in pure water, is 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter, so you may be tempted to write 10 to the negative 7 moles per liter here. That wouldn't be incorrect, but as we'll see when we get to later in the process, that's going to complicate the mathematics here. 10 to the negative 7 is very, very tiny compared to the initial concentration of HF. And because of that, and also because of the fact that it's very tiny with respect to the Ka value, we can assume that the initial concentration of H3O plus is zero. I call this the zero initial hydronium assumption. It holds up very well in situations where the initial concentration of acid and the Ka value are both large with respect to 10 to the negative 7. Because we have essentially no products in this case, we know that the reaction is going in the forward direction, and I do just want to show that explicitly in this case, just to jog our memory on how Q versus K works. So Q is the reaction quotient, remember, and in this case, it has the form of the equilibrium expression. On the product side, we have aqueous fluoride, and we have aqueous H3O+. On the reactant side, we have aqueous HF and liquid water, which isn't going to appear here. Q, for the initial conditions, is 0 times 0 divided by 0 0.025, which comes out to 0, right? Necessarily, that means that Q is less than K. We can compare the initial Q that we just calculated to the Ka value that's given in the problem to see that. That means that the reaction is going to go forward, so we're going to lose reactants and gain products, plus X and plus X. Stoichiometry, one of the nice things about acid-base equilibria is that stoichiometry is a non-issue. We don't have to worry about adding coefficients on the change line because the coefficients will always be one. We're looking at the transfer of one proton. Don't see any stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical equation there. So then on the equilibrium line, if we add the initial and change lines, we get 0 0.025 minus x, x, and x. And now we can apply these equilibrium concentrations to the equilibrium expression, which is the same as the Q expression, just with equilibrium concentrations. That means that Ka is equal to, in this case, x times x, this x being associated with fluoride, this x being associated with hydronium concentrations, so x squared, divided by 0 0.025 minus x. I'm going to erase some things to give myself a little bit of space. Now let's think about how we would go about solving this equation to find x. We could multiply both sides by 0 0.025 minus x and then apply the quadratic formula. Or we could notice that the initial concentration of acid is much, much larger than the Ka value. Here we're looking at about 10 to the negative 2. Here we're looking at about 10 to the negative 4. So we've got about 100 times the Ka value in the initial concentration of HF here. What that means is that the, the ultimate value of x is going to be very small. So we can make use of what we called in the last chapter the small x approximation to simplify this problem considerably. And again, in an acid-base context, this is going to have the same conditions on it that it had in the previous chapter. As long as the initial concentration is very large with respect to the Ka value and very large with respect to the calculated value of x, you can essentially ignore 
these minus x or plus x terms that show up in equilibrium expressions to simplify your life. Doing that, we get that the Ka value, I'll go ahead and plug in an actual number here, 7.2 times 10 to the negative 4, is equal to x squared divided by 0 0.025. This is very straightforward to solve. We can just multiply both sides by 0 0.025 and then take the square root. That gets us to x is equal to 0 0.0045. Moles per liter. Now, this x value is the equilibrium concentration of fluoride and the equilibrium concentration of hydronium. So, if we're interested in calculating the pH, all we need to do then is take the negative base 10 logarithm of that x value. And in acid base equilibrium problems like this, that's always going to be the case provided we started with zero initial hydronium since x is simply going to be equal to the, the equilibrium value of H3O+. And in this case, the negative base 10 logarithm of that 0 0.0042 value comes out to 2.37, and this is the equilibrium pH of that 0 0.025 molar aqueous solution of HF. So we took a lot of steps here, so let's briefly review the process we went through to figure out this pH value. The first thing to notice is that we're looking at a calculate the pH type of problem, and this is an equilibrium affair provided we're dealing with a weak acid. And so the first place to look really is at the identity of the acid. Is it weak? Is it strong? If it's strong, breathe a sigh of relief and just apply stoichiometry using the initial concentration, realizing that the reaction is going to go 100% to completion. If it's a weak acid, we have to worry about equilibrium, and from there, you're going to want to look at the Ka value and write the associated balanced equation, realizing that the balanced equation is sort of dictated by the fact that this is a Ka value, and Ka is always associated with the reaction of the acid in aqueous solution with water. From there, we set up the initial line of the ice table using the given initial concentration of acid, this zero initial hydronium assumption and the zero initial conjugate base, which is pretty typical, wrote the change line based on Q versus K, where Q was pretty straightforward to calculate because we started with no products, found the equilibrium line as usual, used the small x approximation in this calculation down here, we can kind of make the calculation step five, to simplify the process, found the value of x, and then where in the previous chapter we might have just wanted to know that equilibrium concentration itself, since what we would actually measure would be the pH value, and that's what's actually asked for here, the final step is to apply the pH as the negative base 10 logarithm of the equilibrium H3O plus value to get to the final pH of 2.37. A lot of steps involved, but everything after the beginning of the ice table and before the calculation of pH are things we saw in the previous chapter in our treatment of equilibrium.